Dry age-related macular degeneration can be a devastating condition that leaves patients with a loss of their central vision, however they maintain their peripheral vision. I have already spoken about dry macular degeneration in another one of my videos, however today I will be focusing on what foods can be incorporated into one's diet to try and combat the process of macular degeneration at a very specific cellular level. In terms of risk factors for macular degeneration, we cannot control our age and we cannot control our genetics. However, we can control smoking, we can control sunlight exposure and we can control our diet. This video, as I've already mentioned, is going to be focusing on the dietary elements of an individual's life that can help in terms of combating the process of macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is a process of age-related wear and tear. In this process, oxidants are produced inside the body. These oxidants are highly reactive and they can engage with other cells to inflict and cause damage. This is the process by which macular degeneration occurs. It therefore stands to reason that if we use antioxidants to try and nullify the effect of these oxidants, we stand a good chance of trying to slow down the effects of macular degeneration. It is important to remember that when oxidants are active and these reactions are taking place, this results in inflammation also, which has been hypothesized as being part of the process. Examples of naturally occurring antioxidants are vitamins A, C and E. Other food components that are also good for us are lutein and zeaxanthin. These two components are found in abundance at the macula. If you remember from my macular degeneration video, the macula is the part of the back of the eye that provides us with our critical sense of vision. So therefore, in order for the macula to function as optimally as possible, these two components need to be functioning well. Lutein and zeaxanthin are actually yellow plant pigments, but fortuitously they are found in abundance within foods that we eat. Some of the roles of these two components are to absorb harmful wavelengths of light, namely blue light, and also they neutralize free radicals. It is recommended that we consume 10 milligrams of lutein per day. Lutein is thankfully found in a whole host of vegetables, including kale, red peppers, spinach, peas, leek, and broccoli. It has been known for some time that likely cooking vegetables allows the majority of the nutritious components within these foods to enter our body. Other foods that are good for these macular pigments that I have mentioned include sweet corn, orange peppers and eggs. Patients frequently ask if I cannot get these nutritional components from my diet alone, is it worth starting supplements? The answer to this is probably yes, however this should always be done in close association with consulting your eye care professional and or your medical doctor. Essentially the study that informs us about this positive benefit of taking supplements is the RED study, which is the age-related eye disease study. And what this study found was that vitamins C, E, lutein, zeaxanthin, um, and zinc, and copper, basically, if incorporated into our diets, can help to slow down the progression of AMD. It is important to remember that this is for dry AMD, and it is also important to remember that it does not reverse the changes necessarily that have occurred, it rather slows down the progression of the condition. Your eye care professional will also take a detailed history from yourself and ensure that there are no contraindications, i.e. reasons why you should not start these supplements. For example, patients that are smokers should not start these su supplements because there is an increased risk of lung cancer. Moreover, the detailed clinical history 
of your consultation will allow your eye care professional to understand whether you are on any certain medications that would be negatively impacted by taking supplements. For example, vitamin K supplements can interact with a commonly taken medication by patients known as warfarin. Patients may then ask if I am regularly consuming five portions of fruits and vegetables a day, do I need to take these supplements? The answer to this is probably no. The clue is in the name. These are called supplements. They're meant to supplement something. So therefore, if you're already incorporating lots of nutritional goodness into your diet and therefore into your body, you do not need to take these supplements. Going back to the aspect of smoking, the evidence suggests that if one takes a supplement that has beta carotene contained within it, then whether you are a current smoker or an ex-smoker means that you are at increased risk of developing lung cancer. This is why supplements and medications should never be started without proper thorough medical input and advice. It has also been recommended that patients with dry AMD to incorporate nuts into their diet, providing there is no reason why they cannot take these things, such as an allergy, for example, and almonds and pistachios, etc., um, can be of great nutritional value and also they taste great. Nuts are essentially providing us with vitamin E, which we can also get from fortified sources such as cereals. Vitamin C can be incorporated into the diet through citrus, strawberries, and peppers, also broccoli. Beta carotene can be incorporated into the diet through consuming carrots, spinach, sweet potatoes, and apricots. Zinc is an essential mineral that our body requires. It is essential in transporting vitamin A from the liver to our eyes. And then when it is in the eyes, it helps to um, produce melanin, which is the pigment that will help to protect the eye from harmful radiation, for example. Zinc can be found in, again, a variety of sources. Some of these include whole grains, red meat, oysters, beans, and some dairy products. In addition to ensuring that you provide yourselves with the best chance of combating dry AMD by eating a nutritious diet, other important aspects should not be overlooked. These include regular exercise, ensuring that your blood pressure is controlled, ensuring that your diabetes is controlled, ensuring that you exercise as regularly as possible, and also ensuring that you protect your eyes from the sunlight, either by using sunglasses or by a combination of sunglasses and wide-brimmed hats. On screen now, I have provided a link and I will also provide this in the description below. It is from the Macula Society and it provides great recipes for nutritious foods that are very beneficial for patients with dry AMD. The final food component to touch upon is omega-3. The evidence for omega-3 is conflicted, whereas some papers suggest it is beneficial, other papers suggest that it is not beneficial. Omega-3 can be found in fish alongside other B vitamins and therefore the recommendation is to potentially eat two to three portions of fish per week. Thank you for watching this video about dry AMD and the importance of diet when it comes to trying to combat this condition. As you will know from my dry macular degeneration video and if you don't know please do watch my video dry AMD unfortunately has no treatment and therefore it largely revolves around controlling lifestyle factors and managing other risk factors. I hope you have found this video beneficial. If you have any family members with dry AMD or you have dry AMD yourself, then please do let me know what you have thought about this video, whether you have any other feedback, do you know of any other good recipes that you can recommend to the viewers. Um, I would be super grateful for all of your input. If you have found this video useful, please do click the like button, subscribe, share the video with your family and friends, and thank you so much again. Take care.